Welcome to Superior Profit Monday morning market meeting, 25th February 2019. I am Sakandandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. This session is meant to be a demonstration of top-down, bottom-up and inside-based identification of trading opportunities using Q systems. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to the live system. We start our day with the global markets. We'll have a look at the global markets using Q at a glance template, which is our weekly, daily at a glance template. We'll start with Australia market, AXJO. After displaying the bullish headwind, Australian market is going up steadily. You can see the weekly backdrop candle color never changed to even yellow, even though the price pulled back a little bit in this week and also in this week, also in this week. That is how the backdrop candle color is decide, designed. It doesn't change color just because a particular week closes below the previous week. It takes into account multiple weeks and if it thinks that the market is still bullish on the weekly interval, it will keep the color cyan. The backdrop color is cyan for many weeks now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten weeks. The last week is still in progress. Today is Monday. In the daily chart, price is going up steadily with higher highs and higher lows at a sharp angle. Price is supported by memory support line. It is clearly bullish and overbought in weekly and daily both. This is a pattern that we'll see in most of the global markets as well as the USA market. Let's look at China market, CSI 300. Was going up for several weeks and now you can see for three weeks, the pace of movement is accelerating. We have bigger and bigger candles, all hollow candles for three successive weeks. In fact, if you start looking from this week, the hollow bodies are increasing in length for four weeks in a row. That shows very nice acceleration in price movement. Today's candle is a very large bullish candle, open up with a gap up, closed right at the very high. That is very bullish for the Chinese market. Now the news is out today that additional tariff on Chinese imports will not go into effect from 1st March. So today's market was bullish. But in fact, if you see the price movement for several weeks, the market was already considering the possibility. That's why price already went up. And once the news is out, price went up even more. What about Hong Kong market? Hong 
Hong Kong market is also steadily going up. This week's candle, which is today's candle, is bullish. Not as bullish as the China index, but the shape and color in daily chart, both are bullish. And it is overbought in weekly, daily, both. China market was also overbought. India, NSEI, Nifty 50 index. This was moving sideways and that is continuing range bound in the weekly chart and also in the daily chart. In the last session, I mentioned that the right trade setup to use in such a range bound market is the box trade setup, which relies on the stretch release, bear release at the top or bull release at the bottom. If you applied that setup, you had a profitable trade at this point when the bear release came along with a false upside breakout at the watermark resistance level. And you had a subsequent box long trade setup at this point when price came to this watermark level and went up with a bull release signal. This is the Nifty index. When price was coming to the top of the range and showing bear release or coming to the bottom of the range and showing bull release, you could drill down into the constituent stocks or in general stocks in the India market and take bearish position when the Nifty index was giving a box short trade setup and take long positions in stocks when the Nifty index was giving a box long trade setup. Right now, price is in the middle of the range. That is not an area where we would like to take a position in this index. It's kind of no man's land when it is range bound, but in the middle of the range. Let's look at UK market, FTAC. This is not bullish. Last week displayed a bear release signal. The candle color in the weekly chart was still cyan. This week, at least on the first day, the color has changed to neutral. In the daily chart, it displayed the pretty effective bear reach headwind signal. One, two, three, four, five, last Monday. And since then, price is not able to go up. The headwind signal was able to accurately predict possible reversal once again. We'll look at the USA market near the end of the session, but it is also very bullish now. Let's continue with the second topic in the weekly market roundup, I mentioned that though energy reversed strongly one week ago and this week continued to go up, it is the most decelerating sector or one of the most decelerating sectors. We'll check it out from QH. And looking at that, I mentioned it may not be easy to find low risk Q long trade setups in energy stocks. I mentioned that based on trying to find long trade setups, I will show what are the steps that I carried out. It was not easy to find, but I could find two stocks, HLX and PES. Let me explain what are the steps that I carried out and how I came to these two stocks, starting from QH, top-down analysis. This is the sector performance graph in QH. Energy went up for the week and energy went up on Friday as well. However, if we look at the sector scorecard and heat map, let me look at the five days period. Sort by pace column that shows acceleration, deceleration. We'll see energy is the second most 
decelerating sector as of Friday's close. Pace five days column shows that energy was very weak earlier, strengthened in the middle, weakened again. Now it is not fully magenta, however, the weakness is showing up in the pace column. It is the second most decelerating sector. Then I drill down into the energy stocks. In the latest release of QH, we have the ability to choose multiple industries and click on this selective list drill down button. If I click this, it will give me all the stocks belonging to all these industries. We could do that or we could look for the strongest industries which are oil and gas equipment and services and coal and consumable fuels, strongest in energy sector. We could choose only those two and click on the selective drill down. Let me do that because these two are the best performers in energy sector. So I drill down selectively. Now I have all the stocks in QH from both the industries. I was looking for a buy setup. So I sorted the stocks by performance over five days. Let me choose all the stocks that went up by at least 2% in the previous week. I have 16 stocks now. Let me, actually I could open on Q Global also. Let me, okay, let, let me use Q Elite because most of the attendees are trading in the USA market. I changed the technical trading system to Q Elite. I have selected these stocks. These stocks are in energy sector, in two of the best performing industries in the, that sector. And they went up last week by at least 2%. I can click the chart icon to get the stocks into trade station. Go to at a glance, paste all the stocks. And then I will go through all of them one by one and we'll Try to find out long opportunities, starting with APY. Here, I didn't think of taking any long position because it is already above upper boundary line and it is overbought. This is bullish, but it is not giving any of the Q long trade setups right now. It is already overbought. Then AROC, this is also not giving any long trade setup right now. It is going up, so a long trade setup would be a trend following long trade setup with the cyan color candle in the daily that we don't have. Instead, price is coming down from the memory resistance in the weekly chart. Next one, BAGE, price is too close to the upper boundary line. The last possible buy opportunity was on this cyan color candle because that candle had an upper tail one could take a trade on next day using fine-tune real-time intraday entry chart brs it's in a downtrend we are not going to buy it ceix it has no trade setup yellow candles don't give us any trade setup in a trend following condition. CJ, again, yellow candle, no trade setup. CKH, above upper boundary, yellow candle, no trade setup. ERA, above upper boundary, we are not going to buy it overboard. EXTN, yellow candle. Weekly is bullish. So this might give us a go with flow long trade setup. If price goes up today or tomorrow, 
with a cyan color candle in the daily chart that will meet all the requirements of the trend following long trade setup. Interestingly, it recovered after displaying the bullish headwind signal and the bull release signal that was also a false downside breakout at the same time. So you could probably take a long trade here, right at the very bottom, using a mixture of box long trade setup at double bottom and also a headwind reversal trade setup at the very low you would have booked at least partial profit by the time price came to the yellow direction line. After the headwind reversal trade setup, if the stock continues to go up, the next trade setup will be go with flow trend following long trade setup. If it goes up, it may give that setup. However, we came to all these stocks noticing that energy is decelerating sector. So before taking any long trade in energy sector, you may be careful and check out the stocks industry if it is still strong or strengthening. GIFI, already close to upper boundary line in the daily chart and the earlier candles had long upper tail. It is bullish, but it's not giving us any long trade setup. MDR, is in a triangle pattern in daily chart, OIS, moving sideways, need to have a breakout first, breakout first and pull down and go up again to give us a low risk entry or price needs to come to the memory support and reverse from there for us to have a low risk entry point. Palm very bullish in the weekly chart. Daily chart is also bullish, but too close to the upper boundary and also close to the daily memory resistance line. Again, interestingly, price reversed after displaying a bullish headwind right at the very bottom. Now it is too late to take a long trade. SLCA, yellow candle, Therefore, we have no trade setup. The stock is moving up. So only trade setup we could apply is the go with flow trend following long trade setup that will need a cyan color candle that we don't have. An SPN, yellow candle and also near upper boundary. We don't have any trade setup right now. So we didn't find any long trade setup in the to best performing energy industries. That's why I mentioned in the weekly market roundup, it may not be easy to find low risk, long trade setup in any of the energy stocks. However, we found two. One was HLX. Actually, it gave the trade setup on Wednesday and PES that gave the trade setup on Friday. Let's look at that. HLX. The weekly candle colors were cyan for several weeks. Then in the daily chart, price broke out of this watermark resistance, pulled back, went up again with a cyan color candle. That was Wednesday previous week, that gave us a go with flow long trade setup. Our stop would be just below the memory support line, initial profit target would be the wide direction line or the upper boundary level. It has gone up, but it hasn't hit the profit target yet. Hasn't stopped us out also. We are still in the trade if we took the Wednesday's go with flow long trade setup. Other than the required conditions of cyan color candle in daily, cyan color candle in weekly, the movement indicators all being green, those were the required conditions. And then we additionally had some more signals in favor of the long trade. That is, we had a high pressure day, bullish pressure day shown by this cross and the cross below the pressure is showing it was also an U-turn day. U-turn day because we had bearish pressure one day ago and then a bullish pressure. 
so we had a pressure u-turn as well so we had additional forces favoring the long trade that is bullish pressure and bullish pressure u-turn that signal came on wednesday and pes gave us the signal on friday the weekly is bullish and in daily chart price broke out of the two watermark resistance levels pulled back went up again on friday friday again had bullish pressure and bullish pressure u-turn therefore you could find both these stocks from sonar scan or station scan if we drop the two stocks in sonar pes and hlx the hlx signal came on wednesday so it will not show the u-turn right now but if we look at pes we can see it gave us a go with flow trend following long trade setup on friday it had a bullish pressure day on Friday and it also had a bullish pressure U-turn on Friday. So we had additional signals to take the long trend. We can also see it is at pendulum low, that is price extreme low. That may be a very low price point to allow us a swing trade, but possibly a long term investment as well. If that is so, why don't we check out the stocks fundamentals pes.n? We are going to type the symbol in Q vital. It will go and retrieve some basic data about the stock. It's in oil as oil and gas drilling industry. Then it is retrieving the PRs and finally it retrieved the stocks detail calculated fundamental statistics. From the vital scorecard, we can see valuation is in yellow color. So the valuation is in the middle. Earnings growth is negative. Revenue growth is positive, but it declined from previous quarter. So PES is not a fundamentally strong stock. At best, it is in the middle. If we combine earnings growth, combine revenue data, combine valuation, it is more on the weaker side, not even in the middle. So fundamentally, it is not a strong stock. One thing that may support the long trade is that it has a short squeeze potential. But we will not say that this is a 360 degree trade. Fundamentally, clearly, it is not a strong stock. What about the industry? oil and gas drilling we can check it out from qh oil and gas drilling industry not very strong therefore we don't have a strong industry we don't have a strong fundamental even if the technical charts are telling there is a possible technical trade in q approach we are not going to take it because we want to align more and more forces in our favor we want more robust trade setups not only looking at technicals but at fundamental strength and also industry strength that is not allowing us to take a trade in pes though technically it has a trade setup you will see if you follow the 360 degrees approach you may have to ignore some of the technical setups but your success rate will be higher and that will be reflected in your account balance as well so we are not going to take any trade in pes third topic let us discuss khc Kraft heinz company it had a huge drop last friday 27% plus drop after poor earnings and some other negative news were also associated with the earnings result. When a stock drops so much, especially a well-known stock, 
KHC is a very well-known brand, very big brand, one of the biggest holdings of Berkshire Hathaway, very large company. So people may be tempted to buy it as a value stock. That is another useful, one valuable use of Q Vital, it shows us whether the stock is really a value stock or not. It's not only based on price move, valuation has to be based on fundamentals. In terms of technicals, we can say the stock is oversold, but that doesn't mean the stock is fundamentally good value. We have to check it out from Q Vital, what is the exact symbol? khc dot o okay khc dot o if it is an optimal valuation stocks now after the huge drop then it will show up as cyan color valuation score in cube vital let us check it out by the way earnings per share is still positive it didn't turn negative this is the yearly earnings per share the valuation of KHC is not cyan. It is yellow, therefore it is not a value stock yet. Earnings growth declined, but it did it become red. Dec negative, but not very negative. Still the stock had a huge drop, 27% plus drop on Friday. But it is not a value stock, therefore, we are not going to consider buying it now. Let me magnify it a little bit. What about technicals? KHC, is it showing us some possibility of bounce? For that, the stock has to be near an existing support level, either a deep watermark or a memory trend line support, but there is none. There is none. There is no watermark support nearby or memory support nearby, neither in the daily chart nor in the weekly chart. This shows that even if a stock, well-known stock drops a lot, in Q technique, we don't go and rush to buy it. We wait for it to be value stock in terms of fundamentals if we are looking to buy a well-known brand at value. And also technically, we must always wait for a low risk trade entry setup and there is none at present in KHC. This example showed that low price doesn't always mean value stock. Similarly, some stocks you will find are at a very high price. That doesn't necessarily mean they are overvalued. The true valuation score will be shown by Q vital that takes care of the fundamental analysis that is different from a stock being overbought or oversold that you can check from the technical charts. Next topic, let us have a look at Nike. I came to notice Nike starting from top down analysis. Let me refresh the industries. I was looking for the worst performing industries and footwear is one of them. Why it caught my attention is earlier it used to be very strong. The scores were all in cyan color and very gradually, nicely it is declining now. This week's score is magenta. Plus it is showing heavy deceleration. This is the kind of industry where we would look for shorting opportunities. Therefore, I drill down. And I saw out of the three stocks or food retail, sorry, I clicked on the wrong industry. Food retail, no, 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 sorry, sorry, not food retail. I was looking for footwear. Where is footwear? I'm mixing things up. <laughs> sorry about it. This is footwear, footwear. Footwear was strong earlier, now weak with deceleration. I should put my cursor anywhere on footwear, not on food retail and click this check 
button. Yes, we have the footwear stocks. And when I sort by valuation column, simply by double clicking, I see only Nike NKE has valuation score in magenta color. That is, it is overvalued, only one stock. And if you think about brands, it, the best brand in the footwear industry is actually the most overvalued stocks now. stock now. Yearly earnings growth is still negative. Quarterly earnings growth is positive in the last quarter, but it slowed down from previous quarter. Previous quarter was 17.5% earnings growth. The last quarter had 13% earnings growth. Not a big decline, but a small decline. The stock is already overvalued. That led me to have a look at the technical charts. Let's look at that. By the way, let's check the next earnings. Next earnings is due on 21st March, about one month away. How is the technical? In the weekly chart, it is coming to the watermark resistance level, where it displayed a bearish headwind earlier. That was in late September 2018. That bearish headwind led to a significant price drop. Then the earnings came and price recovered again. The drop started after earnings. The reversal up started after the next earnings and soon the March earnings is coming. It is at a resistance level, at a level where bearish headwind came earlier. If price goes up above the watermark resistance and comes down again, that will create a false upside breakout. You may keep an eye on the weekly daily charts. If that happens, then in the daily chart, you may have a box short trade setup or bounce short set, trade setup because it will be reversing from a deep watermark level. You may keep an eye for those trade setups. Right now there is no short trade setup, so we are not going to short it now. It is clearly going up, we are not going to short it now. However, if you are having a long position, you may be careful because the industry is weakening it is weak now, it is showing deceleration. This is the most overvalued stock in the industry and it is at a resistance level and earnings is coming in one month still a long time for swing trading. You may keep an eye, be careful about long position holding. No need to exit it unless it is showing a short setup or starting to go down. At minimum, you may apply a trailing stop using the Q protection signal, the trailing stop would be around say 80 to 80 now at this price level. Next topic, Wayfair. This is a stock that went up strongly. Retail stock. Let's start with the technicals. It had a huge move up on Friday, gap up move and then it went up further. Looking at the intraday chart in one of the trading forum in the Discord forum of Dr. Jeffrey, when price was around this watermark resistance in the weekly chart, I mentioned in the Discord forum that there is a chance it is going to come down and close below watermark resistance. That's what the watermark resistances are for, it's not easy for price to simply pierce through them. It is more likely it will come down at least for a few days. So using intraday chart, I could in fact take a bearish trade using short call vertical. And that trade had good profit for a vertical trade. Verticals are not going to explode in profit. They have a short leg as well as a long leg, but the trade had significant profit within that day. If I look at the intraday chart and change to our standard five minute template, looking at the watermark 
resistance level in the weekly and the fact that the stock had gone up a lot when the bear release signal came you could initiate the short call vertical trade and you could in fact look to book profit when it came to the early range high if price could continue to go down you could hold on to that or you could book profit when it came to the early range high that would give you extremely good reward risk ratio if you took the shot using the bear release signal this bear release signal in the five minute chart entry would be here stop would be just above recent high and when price came here you had maybe one is to three reward risk ratio we were not going to take such a trade only looking at the five minute chart that is not our approach we always want more confirmation more reasons to take a short trade not only based on higher time frame in this case weekly daily which had a deep watermark resistance level but also based on fundamentals or technicals price did go up but if you check the fundamentals and the exact symbol would be w fundamentals are not that good in some way it is okay but it is not great can the stock still go up it can certainly go up as it did on friday doesn't mean it is one of the best fundamental stocks it is in internet and direct marketing retail we'll look up the industry scorecard soon let's look at the fundamentals first q vital instantly shows it is very overvalued stock the valuation score is in magenta color earnings growth is negative for all the three past quarters though the yearly earnings growth is now positive for the last three quarters which is actually sufficient for swing trading purpose to know about only last quarter data is also enough for swing trading because swing trades typically will close out within five to seven working days maybe maximum two weeks so looking for yearly earnings growth for swing trading may not be that relevant three successive quarters of significantly negative earnings growth plus a stock that is overvalued at the same time doesn't speak well for the fundamentals of the stock only thing going for the stock is revenue growth is it great it is not fantastic but steady about 40 percent revenue growth for the last year as well as for the last three quarters probably that is what led many people to buy the stock and it jumped up by 27 percent on a closing basis you could short the trade at a much higher level maybe 35 percent or something like that and book quick profit using the short call vertical i also checked out the stocks industry before shorting the stock using vertical the industry was internet and direct marketing retail let's look at the industry from qh we can filter for it not strong that is why i was okay to short the stock though the stock had a very large up move three reasons technically it was at a deep watermark resistance level stocks just don't pierce through them straight away and i had a bear release signal in the intraday five minute chart that allowed me to take a minuscule stop short trade you could take it using stocks also the stop had to be followed religiously very small stop loss fundamentals were not really looking good negative earnings growth for three quarters extremely overvalued stock and industry is also not strong there was not much going for the stock so i was happy to short it and i shared it in the discord forum at the time when i shorted it next topic i will explain few of the new smart filters that we added 
in Q edge and Q vital. In dashboard, we have the icon for refreshing data into the view, what we are seeing on all the tabs from the cloud and from the cache. We have the pause button. If we are not using Q edge, there is no need to keep streaming on. For example, now I have paused it, clicking the pause button, so streaming is off. When I am looking at Q edge using it, I can click the play button and it will start to stream data from Thomson Reuters and calculate everything in cache. Every time I click the download from cache button, this icon, it will get the view updated. In Q inside, we have the same refresh from cache. We have the binocular button to drill down into any stocks industry. So let's take an example. Let's look at the let's look at this best performing growth stock as of 24th February. That is the latest data. And if I click the binocular button, it will drill down into the industry, which is healthcare technology. And healthcare technology is looking strong, though it is showing deceleration. The score is showing strength. Deceleration is there, but it is strong. When I click the binocular button, it also showed me all the stocks in the industry, healthcare technology. And I can find my stock here, HMSY, which is one of the best performing growth stocks of Friday went up by 12.9%. That is a significant jump. Why is it a growth stock? The earnings growth for last three yearly periods compound aggregate earnings growth over one year, two year, three year is bright green. So this is considered a consistent growth stock in our system. So HMSY is one. If I go back to inside on HMSY, if I click the peer analysis button, it will take me to the stock tab and it will highlight the stock and it will also filter for the industry at the same time. That These are two different ways I can learn more about the stocks that are coming in the insight panel. If I click the chart icon, if I am using Metastock Q Global, and Metastock Q Global is running, if I click the chart icon, then it will, in fact, open the chart directly. If I set the technical trading system to Q Elite, then it will copy the ticker symbol that I can paste easily into Radar. So this was one of the best performing growth stocks on Friday. It is looking extremely bullish, both in the weekly chart and the daily chart. What was the best time to buy it? In our technique, the best time to buy it when price came to this watermark, support level in the weekly chart. So starting from this point, we were going to look for buying opportunities and we could easily buy it on this yellow candle. It precisely hit the memory support and went up from there. That was around 28 point something. So probably, probably this point. We could start to look for buying opportunities. Now it could be taken as a breakout trade, but we are, I am personally not a very big fan of breakout trades because the stop loss tend to be wider. But it is certainly looking bullish and we could find it from the insight, the insight category for base performing growth stock. This icon here, it calculates all the insight categories and each icon beside the category calculates that specific category. And the top icon will calculate all the categories. In the sector panel, we have the refresh button from cache and the drill down button. So if I look at the best performing sector on Friday, I could click the check mark. It will drill down into the industries. In addition, it will also 
filter for all the material stocks only in the stock panel. I don't have to do another filter. And if I wanted to know over five days, this is the best performing sector, what are the best performing stocks? I get many of them. Then I could look at the stocks, maybe those which went up by more than 4%, put it in the sonar or in Metastock and analyze them further. That was the drill down icon in sector panel. Then in industry panel, we have the refresh button. And then we have a series of buttons. The check mark serves the same purpose as in the sector tab, we can drill down. So home furnishing is looking good. Cyan color now, earlier it was magenta. We could click the check mark to drill down into the stocks. When it showed the stocks, it also selected for the sector and I can see the sector is not that strong, which is okay. Sector level is too broad. We don't need to worry about that. Industry is strong, is good enough for us. And then we would look for the best performing stocks. I can see LZB is the best performer last week, but we have two other stocks also that went up by more than 3%. Then we could analyze them further in terms of valuation and growth. Industry tab has few more buttons. This button with multiple checks, what it does is it shows me all the stocks of the top 10 industries. Top 10 doesn't mean best performer. It means whatever criteria I'm using. So if I sort in this manner, double click on the five days column, then I am looking at the best performing stock. So if I click this button, it will show me the stocks for the 10 best performing industries, not stocks, 10 best performing industries. If I reverse the sort order, and click this button. I don't have to select anything. Just click this button. It is going to show me all the stocks in the 10 worst performing industries. If I sort by base column, getting the most accelerating industries to the top and now click this button, don't need to select anything. It will show me all the stocks of the 10 most accelerating industries. Similarly, I could sort by one month column or 10 days column or one day column, whatever be my Sorting criteria doesn't matter. It will show me all the stocks in the top 10 industries. So right now, if I click the multiple check button, it is going to show me the stocks in these 10 industries, which are the 10 best performing industries on Friday. That makes filtering very easy. That is one smart filter we added. Now we have the best performing stocks sorry, best performing industries on Friday, I can sort by the one day column performance and then look at the stocks that went up on Friday, let's say by more than 2%. Then I will have the best performing stocks in 10 of the best performing industries on Friday. That is a smart filter that we added. And sometimes we like to be very careful about what we are selecting. For example, we are Sometimes, personally, I'm fond of looking at industries that are strong now, but were weak earlier. Which one could that be? Aluminium is one such industry, was magenta earlier. Then I can press the control key and select the next one, auto part and equipment. That was also weak earlier, now strengthening. Then I will look at commercial printing. I'll ignore some in the middle because those were shifting colors between magenta cyan, magenta cyan. More steady changes are visible in aluminum, auto parts and equipment, commercial printing, integrated telecom, alternative carriers. Both are in telecom sector. I may even look at commodity chemicals, even oil and gas equipment and services. If I didn't want the energy industry because we saw energy is decelerating, I could keep control placed and click again, that will deselect. So now I have selected one, two, three, four, five, six industries. All of these industries are strong now, but were weak earlier. Now I can click this selective drill down button. It will show me the stocks in all those industries.
all those different industries. This is an easy way to look at stocks that were weak earlier, strengthening now. Look at all the stocks and maybe look at their five days performance. Again, look at the stocks which went up by, let's say, at least 3%. And we could put them into the radar and look for trading opportunities. If we did the same exercise for Friday, then we could choose alternative carriers, food distributors, specialized consumer services, interactive media, apparel retail as well. Let's choose these five. Go down to the stocks level. And now I'm going to sort by one day period. Let me choose all the ones that went up because it is one day. Let me choose all the stocks that went up by at least 1%. And to make it easier, I'm going to choose Q Elite. Click the chart button. And this is Friday's data. So now I could go and place the symbols in Sonar and see if there is any buy opportunity as per the four standard trade setups. The ones with buying opportunity, possible buy setup will float to the top by your short setup. But I hope buy setup because all these stocks went up on Friday. And you can instantly find several possible buying opportunities, at least from the dashboard. We can see for CCOI, it has a go with flow, possible trend following long trade setup. It is also bouncing from memory support. It has a high pressure, bullish pressure day, plus a U-turn day. Direction is showing it is in confirmed uptrend. Traffic light is bullish. It also has a squeeze release, relative performance is strong. VG is having the same fields lit up plus extreme activity. This is good. We have this example. It shows that pressure doesn't mean heavy volume. Pressure is a calculation that is based on both volume and displacement. Sometimes if the volume is not that great, like in case of VG, but the displacement is large, then it will still show up as high pressure. So we have two stocks, both with high pressure, with one with extreme high volume, but not true for the other one. Let's look at these two. CCOY, look at that through our standard at a glance template and instantly it looks quite good. If I change the template to the trending trade entry template, then I can see now it, it got rid of the watermark level and the bear release signal, bull release signals, because I'm looking for a trend following trade. Those signals are not relevant. The weekly is bullish color for many weeks. That meets the requirement for a trend following long trade setup. In the daily, it is going up with higher highs, higher lows. Price is supported by memory line. Price went up from the memory support line. And we have a cyan color candle on Friday. So it met all the requirements of a trend following long trade setup, go with flow setup. And we had bullish pressure that was following the bearish pressure that came up as U-turn, bullish U-turn. So we could gather all the information from the sonar and look it up on the at a glance template. Let's look at the second stock. VG. Later on, we'll have a look at their fundamentals and technicals because we always want to make sure that we are aligning all the forces. Sometimes we may have to ignore some trades, but I think it is worth it because the success rate is higher and we are always able to find trade setups in 360 degrees approach. We don't have to worry about that. Weekly is bullish again, cyan color for several weeks now. In daily, it is steadily going up. And on Friday, we have a cyan color candle. We, in fact, could take a long position on this candle itself. That was a trend following long trade setup. I can see the weekly was already cyan. If we are tracking the stocks regularly, we would be able to enter the trade on this day itself. Now also it is okay. After earnings, it tried to go down but reversed immediately and went to the opposite side and I can see the bullish pressure and U-turn as was shown by the sonar. Let's look at their fundamentals, CCOI and VG. Let me make sure what is the 
full writer symbol ccoi okay ccoi only and vg vg only that's great let's start with vg quite fast no data is stored in my computer it connects to thompson writers gets all the data alternative carriers this industry is strong and we know it is strong because that is how we came to the stocks we selectively chose the industries that are strong now we earlier then we came to these stocks the technicals are good we saw that from sonar dashboard as well as charts now last step is we are going to look at its fundamentals fundamentally it is not looking good in fact vg and ccoi are in the same industry both of them are overvalued now looking at the fundamentals we know that we would prefer to buy ccoi because it has steady earnings growth over all the last three yearly periods as well as last three quarterly periods vg is not so strong in terms of earnings growth also ccoi has a dividend of 4.5 percent dividend yield that's quite good its earning quality is also stronger cyan color and better score than vg from all the angles we can see ccoi is stronger they happen to be in the same industry and we prefer to buy ccoi over vg that is how the fundamental and peer analysis go together just one is not enough we need to always compare them with each other and when i look at the peer stocks ctl catches our attention because this is the only value stock in the industry it has a huge dividend yield if you were following market roundups for many months you would know we could take a very low risk trade long time ago in ctl when the dividend was around this percent 14 15 percent now it is again 16 percent so probably the stock has fallen but we could book very good profit in ctl at that time it is now showing valuation is great here sand color it is showing earnings growth great dividend revenue growth is there yearly revenue growth is quite good so it is time to look at this stock as well ctl i don't we look at that we didn't start with the stock but looking at the fundamentals it is looking good industry is strong technical is not looking good this is a stock i will add to my watch list there is a deep watermark support level which displayed bullish headwind earlier from that level price could go up a lot actually went to 24 from about 13 that is almost 100 percent move up now price came back to the exact same level i can see extreme high activity in the weekly chart in daily chart we had extreme bearish pressure immediately followed by extreme bullish pressure for two days it is still in a downtrend in the week in the daily chart if it can break out of the memory resistance lines that may give very low risk buying opportunity in an industry that is strong stock has very good dividend value stock and the technical trade setup will allow us very low risk entry opportunity one way to take such trades is to use if you are buying the stock outright you might instead short the put the volatility should be high because the stock dropped significantly relative to the past volatility should be high the put premium should be high instead of buying the stock outright the margin requirement for short put naked short put would be similar to a stock long position you could consider that you could profit significantly even if the stock goes up a little bit the short put naked short put will give significant profit okay there is i i demonstrated in one of the earlier webinars how to set up alerts in icon i had an alert in glw that fired that's fine let's look at the futures we'll not go through any other topics today it's almost one hour E mini because of the announcement that the china tariff will not increase on first march it is expected that the opening will be higher 
we can see futures are moving higher, already up by 16%. That's quite a lot. At NQ, all the futures I expect to be similar, going to open higher. Yes, strong. I will not, I, let me look at YM, but it will be similar. In the market roundup, I mentioned that market ETFs are overbought, market indices are overbought, but all are going up with very robust support from memory trend lines in many of them. Therefore, I said it is not the time to take short trades. We can take long trades, but instead of taking long trades in overbought stocks in terms of technicals or overvalued stocks in terms of fundamentals, we can always use the 360 degrees analysis top down or bottom up to find stocks that are not overbought yet, not overvalued yet, and are still going up giving low risk entry opportunities. You could find such stocks every day, almost every day, using the Q systems. That is the time we have for today. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you again in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably. <laughs>